What was your the universe is fricking with me moment? Right after moving I was in a car accident on the freeway during rush hour. Back end of my car was crunched. While I was sitting in the parking lot of a collision center waiting to be repaired, a semi backed into the front end. The collision center was right next to a trucking company. When my husband called to tell me what had happened I thought he was joking. This is the best one in the thread for me lol. The evening of my first day without a cigarette in 15 years I came across a full pack of smokes lying on a window ledge. Laughter ensued. I never had found even one discarded cigarette before. Nor since. Obligatory not me, but my mother-in-law. She claims she is cursed and ends up in the hospital every the 1st of April, without fail. It started when she was a child, and every year something different gets her. A dog mauling her, a car accident, the balcony security rail giving out and making her fall down three stories, numerous wounds from other people's April Fool pranks going wrong, etc. She even has a bunch of scars. And she can tell you which April 1st caused which scar, complete with a full story. One the 1st of April, we were staying at her place and she made a pillow bunker in her bedroom and literally waited out the entire day in there. She promised to herself that this would be the 1st the 1st of April in decades without a hospital visit. Midnight arrived and she triumphantly left her pillow fort, unharmed and victorious. To celebrate, she decided to cook hamburgers for the whole family, the pan full of burning hot oil, somehow slipped from her hands in such a way that all the oil spilled on her arm. An ambulance had to be called and she needed skin grafts. My personal theory is that the universe got mad she tried to fight back and turned the 1st of April curse up to 11. To be fair the pan slipping is within her control so it could be a self-fulfilling prophecy on a subconscious level. Back when I was a kid, I borrowed a CD of my dad's without asking, and it ended up becoming lost. We looked everywhere, but it was never found. It was a very unique CD and couldn't be replaced. Dad scolded me, but worse, as only a dad can do, he would tease me about it. Example, we'd be riding in the car and he'd sarcastically say boy, it'd sure be nice to listen to that CD, I wonder where it could be. He never forgot, and he made sure that I never forgot either. Fast forward 10 years, my dad died unexpectedly while at work. It was absolutely devastating. He was everything to me and my family, and we were broken. Thankfully, the universe, or someone something, made sure to let us know everything was going to be okay. After we arrived home from the funeral, my mom, siblings, and I were sitting around in silent shock. It was Christmas time, so my brother thought he'd try lightening the mood by playing some Christmas music. He went into the CD cabinet, and there, sitting right in front, was the missing CD. We'd gone into this CD cabinet many times a week for years and years. There was no way we could have missed it. That CD had been missing for 10 years. It was like someone placed it there for us to find. We burst into tears and cried until we couldn't. It was beyond belief. Just yesterday, we had a meeting about restructuring pay wages and titles. I was the logistics team led for 6 years before starting up our facilities department 2 years ago. The meeting is going along then they mention moving up in the company, which piqued my interest. I swapped departments because they didn't want a logistics manager at this site. They then explain that after 2 years in a position they will be either moving people into manager positions or expert positions for people who don't have manager skills or are a department of one like mine. Those positions will be expected to take on one project a year. I'm sitting there dumbfounded. I've been doing multiple projects every year while running the full logistics department. I've completely built our facilities department from the ground up. I've done back to back 500k this projects this year alone. After the meeting I met with HR and the GM to ask what does this mean for me? How am I going to get bumped up? I was told time doesn't start until this year so I'm 2 years from a manager's position and the 20k that comes with it. I just had my resume professionally done and I'm sending it out frick this company. You can't save this file because it's currently open. I know it's open. I made a change and I'm trying to save said change. This happens sometimes when a document is saved on a network share and another user has the doc open when you're trying to save it. The building I work in has two one person bathrooms, in between them, the wall is set back few feet from the rest of the hallway, in that gap is a water fountain, 
a couple of months ago, I went to the drinking fountain to fill up my water bottle. Except there was no water fountain. The wall between the bathroom doors was completely filled in. I walked away from it, looked around the hallway, and then walked back to the area where the drinking fountain was supposed to be, but it was still gone. Thinking I was crazy, I ended up going back to my office and asking my co-workers if we'd ever had a drinking fountain there to begin with. And of course, they said that there was. I went back to the fountain a third time, and it was there, the same as always. This hasn't happened since. I'm still not sure what the heck was going on that day. It's a rotating wall. There's a secret button on the water fountain that flips the wall around. It's like in Scooby Doo when Shaggy accidentally hits the Swift on a statue or some crap and the whole wall rotates them behind it. There is definitely a secret room behind the water fountain. When my dog ran out into the street and a car almost hit it but the car stopped, looked at me, back at my dog, then slammed on the gas pedal running my dog over in the process. WTF. Not as bad as others, but it was last December, I was head over heels in love with this girl, and just had spent $2,500 on a vacation for both of us, and her parents. The vacation wasn't what I expected, cold weather, hotel was crappy, etc. About 2 weeks after we got back, I started working a lot of OT, as a carpenter in Minnesota, in December. It sucked, but I had just spent most of my money on said vacation. My girlfriend decides to go out for her friend's birthday. She gets wasted, and ends up in a threesome, while I'm outside freezing to death, building someone's multi-million dollar home. TL. Doctor spent most of my money on GF. Worked OT outside in December. GF gets plowed by two dudes while I was working. I'm freaking pedoed. We were on a road trip and the kids are playing find a blue car, then find a red car, etc and since they were both boys it was getting loud. I had a headache but didn't want to yell so I said why don't you make it hard and look for a golf cart or something. No one's gonna drive a golf cart on I-95 inches. Just then an 18 wheeler hauling dozens of golf carts pulls up next to us from the next on ramp. Nothing but screams from the back seat. They thought I was magic. Haha <laughs> that's hilarious. They probably still think you have powers. Cut off contact with a horrible ex around May of this year and last week I finally decided to clear all of her crap out of my car. Some clothes and random junk. Got it all bagged up and tossed out. The very next day I turned a corner at the store and there she was. I haven't seen or spoken to her in 6 months and the day after I try to remove items that remind me of her I almost run right into her. Many of my girlfriend's family members have died on the 27th of the month. Aunt, uncle, grandmother, and grandfather, in separate years. But fast forward a few years since the most recent death, and she had to have emergency surgery due to an injury. The date of that surgery? The 27th. Luckily she was fine but was freaking out before then. You have 27 upvotes. The other week. I found out 2 out of 3 people in a particular friend group are into me. Of course, third person is the person I'm into. Hey, the universe gets to crap on 3 people at once. Frick it. It was my birthday weekend. I helped someone jumpstart their car in the morning. Later on, LA has the most rain it's had in 6 years. The storm drain near my house get backed up. My house gets flooded, and was the only one on the block to be affected. No good deed goes unpunished. My honeymoon this year. My mom's family has this curse in which either the bride or the groom gets seriously ill or has some sort of accident the day of their wedding. My grandmother and grandfather had colds. Parents had the flu. My aunt had a cold. My uncle sliced his hand open on the cake knife. My older sister's transport's frame snapped in half. My twin had the flu. So it's my wedding day and my husband couldn't raise his arms above his waist because he overdid it on his workout. Pretty mild in terms of the curse. Dancing was interesting but it didn't severely impact anything. Wedding goes perfect and my mom and I think we've beaten the curse. Yay. So we're road tripping without our pups to a family vacation home. 20 miles away from our destination. Over 400 miles from home. A deer jumps out of the brush and we hit it. The hood had crumpled right into our radiator. So we call the cops and insurance and try to get a tow truck. Mind you it's July and upwards of 100 degrees Fahrenheit. 
Three hours after we hit the deer, a nearby farmer put it out of its misery. A cop shows up to record what happened. He leaves. Two hours after that the whole fire department of the nearby town shows up cause someone called 911 as they passed us on the road. We feel their concerns and they leave. 5. 1 stroke 2 hours after we hit the deer the tow truck dude shows up. Dude's a prick. And extremely misogynistic and ends up pee off both my husband and I. He drops us off at a mechanic at our original destination. It's 9pm. I call a taxi service only to find out they don't send out taxis after sunset. So I frantically call my family members. Hoping they know someone currently vacationing in town. My grandmother has our friend pick us up and drop us off at the vacation home. We think it's over. The next night we find out my husband's grandmother has cancer and she won't last out the year. My husband flies out 3 days later to say goodbye. I am left alone with the mechanics consistently saying the car will be done by the end of the week. 2. 1 stroke 2 weeks after we hit the deer I drove home to my husband and pups. So I'm not looking forward to what our kids might go through when they get married. So sorry to hear that and from what it seems as you got the worst of the curse hopefully your kids don't go through something similar. Dad's got Sturgeon syndrome and ME. I've got ME and POTS. Mum just got diagnosed with vascular dementia. Can't keep getting worse right? Dog got diagnosed with diabetes last year. Now he has an inoperable liver tumor. It's beginning to take the pee a little. I feel like that guy from the story about being pressed to death and just saying more weight. Giles Curry, yeah man that's a perfect metaphor. I'm so sorry this is happening to you. But you have to be like Curry. He was defiant to the end. Hold on, it will get better. After a string of really bad luck, not getting a promotion, losing access to my meds and my psychiatrist, having to drop and retake a class, and more, I got into a small fender bender. I was at fault that it was a very small collision with more damage to my vehicle than his and just the result of hydroplaning in the rain. Simple and clean cut, no one was hurt, everyone got to go home on time. Find out a few days later through the insurance company, after denying an ambulance and medical assistance, assuring the officer on the scene there was no injury, the guy is suing ME $4 sign 50,000 for severe injury sustained in the collision. Really? Hopefully the fact that he denied medical assistance and told the officer he was fine will prove he's lying to whoever looks at his claim lawsuit. It was my 21st birthday. I was enjoying a nice birthday breakfast when my neighbor buzzed the intercom and told me someone had run over my cat. She survived but now she's blind and she was in a lot of pain for quite a while. Around a year or so later, more or less in the same period, it was like one or two months after my birthday, she was poisoned with rat poison. She survived but she was in a lot of, well, pain, as last time, for a few weeks. In that moment I knew the universe hated my cat and me. 7 more lives to go. It was bright and sunny out. I got the trash. I took one single step outside and it started raining immediately. And hard. 2. This kind of happened to me once. 2. My family decided to go to the park that we always went to in the summer. We parked and got out and found a place. We set our stuff and literally 2 seconds later it was raining hard. Imagine graduating at the top of your major with honors, and everyone else just waltz into high paying jobs and you're still unemployed flicking through reddit. Ha 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 ha, yep, I'm stuck in my godforsaken retail job that I wish I could just walk out of every day I'm there, but at least I have a job I guess. There was an achievement for a game that was to get 10 million points by a certain point. I finished with only 9,999,990 points. Literally within 1 millionth of variance. It was Sonic Spinball on the Genesis Collection. PS3. BTW. This is a special kind of heartbreaking. Immediately after Tom Petty died, I sent my brother a text that this was a heartbreaker. My brother died of a heart issue 3 days later. We couldn't have services for my brother for another week. We played his favorite song while carrying his remains out of the church a week later. 3 days after, the singer of his favorite song died. Also on the same morning my cat died. My business failed and I lost everything. Ugh. 
Just on Saturday I was at work annoyingly late pushing on a project that had fallen behind with a looming deadline. It was like 11pm. I'd been there for over 12 hours, I was totally exhausted and stressed out, and I had one step left to complete before I was gonna leave for the night. I get the piece of equipment ready for the step, run the test cycles and cleaning to get it all set up and it's working great. I take it to the project, pull the trigger to start and, thin, the thing totally crapped out somehow between setup and use, literally screamed and then just left. Frick it. So the wife was in Newfoundland and I was in Ottawa. We were moving and she went on ahead while I stayed behind to finish my job and pack up the house. Bored one night I went to a bar and started chatting with a couple of college girls I met. One thing leads to another and they invite me back to their place for a threesome. So here I am thinking. There's no way the wife could find out. I'm leaving town in a few days so there's no way this could ever blow back on me. And these girls were hot. And I turned them down. Even if my wife would never know, I would. I had too much respect for our marriage to do something like that. Three years later we were divorced because she was sleeping with five other men. How much? I kinda expected it was over after the fourth paragraph. But that fifth one, didn't see that coming. Which, I guess you didn't either. Last year I got hit by a car on my bike and broke my wrist in three places. I'm sitting in the hospital bed and the nurse asked if I wanted to watch TV. So I said sure and she handed me the remote. The first thing to come on was the Tour de France. I thought what are the odds lol so I changed the channel. I go to the movie channel and they're playing premium rush where Joseph Gordon Levitt get hit by a car on his bike. I change the channel again and it's American Ninja Warrior. And the first contestant starts taking about how he wanted to win to prove he was recovered from a biking accident. Eventually I got so taken aback and frustrated I just turned it off. 10 minutes later the doctor comes in to evaluate me and goes to shake my broken hand. Switches to his left and says hi I'm Dr. Armstrong. Nice to meet you his name was Armstrong. TLDR I broke my wrist riding my bike and the universe relentlessly teased me for it. Every time I'll learn something the night before or the morning of it somehow appears throughout my day. IDK how or why some things would even appear in daily conversation. Bader Meinhof effect. I developed feelings for one of my friends because we were spending too much time together and I was planning to end our friendship since I knew she didn't reciprocate and I needed space. The day before I was planning to end things there was drama that resulted in her isolating herself from the rest of our friends so not wanting to leave her alone I had to postpone things. So we ended up spending more time together and my feelings for her grew stronger. Things did not end well, but the timing of it was so ridiculous that it still gives me and my other friend, who I was talking to about my feelings, a laugh. I've had three instances in my life where I've gotten decent raises at work. Gotten home to share the news with my wife to find out she's accepted a new position at a new job for less money or decided to change careers that will require her to quit work altogether. Like within days of making a little extra money we take a large financial hit. But she's the love of my life and she's doing what she wants now. So it's all good. Whenever I get a raise or a bonus something breaks in the house taking a chunk of that. Maybe it just seems that way. Either way I'm grateful for the extra funds to address that expense. Literally saw this guy waiting for the train at my station. We're both heading the same route. After I got on the train. A couple of stops later I see him waiting at another station. It's freaking impossible for him to be there when we both took the same freaking train. Not the same cart but still. The day my life collapsed two years ago was late October. I managed to rebuild, get stronger and figure it out. Almost to the day, I lost my job this year. The universe is definitely freaking with me. I hope you're doing okay today. IDK how I forgot about this but here goes. The day I was gonna ask out my crush I find out she moved away to another country. That same day I was playing soccer and someone kicked the heck out of my shin and fractured it. Dinner comes and me and my family go out to eat at a McDonald's because why not. I get food poisoning and that's the end of that crap day. Was with an ex a few years back that I was starting to wonder if I should break up with. Nothing crazy. We were just at different places in our lives and I wasn't sure if I should keep trying to make it work. 
She'd given me a watch as a gift and I came home from work one day and took it off before I was gonna start cooking dinner. I put it on the counter at least 2 inches from the edge. I turned around to get something out of the fridge and almost immediately heard something fall and hit the ground. It was the watch that had somehow fallen off the counter. It was busted up pretty good and I just didn't care. My first instinct was to just chuck it in the trash. That's when I realized that yep, I needed to break up with her. As someone who is going through a breakup, that hurts lol. Do you guys remember the snowstorms up in Oregon earlier this year? I was on my way back to my home state because I'd moved up there and heard news that my aunt fell ill. The day I heard it, I dropped everything, packed everything I could in my car and left. It starts coming down. My wife AMD I made it halfway through the state, praying our car didn't skid off the road with our summer tires. We made it to Oak Ridge on a whim then got turned around at the mountain because no chains. It seemed like every time we made a plan to finally leave ITD be thwarted by another natural disaster. Try to leave east, there was an avalanche covering the road. Try to leave west, landslide. After 5 days we finally made it out of the cleared interstate but it really felt like god was toying with me the whole time. I have two stories for this. The first is after a few years of struggling with depression and lots of people telling me to be positive I went to donate blood. This was my first time donating so about a week after I got a letter thanking me and telling me what my blood type was, which up until this point I didn't know. It was B plus and I just couldn't help but laugh. After all this time having other people telling me to be positive I already was. The second one is a bit more sad. It started on my birthday 4 years ago when the guy I'd been seeing texted me on my birthday to say that he was getting back with his ex-girlfriend. Fast forward to the next year and I'd been with my boyfriend for 6 weeks and received a text from him a few days before my birthday for which we had plans to go away for the weekend, ending the relationship. That really got me good. Fast forward one more year and I'm dating a guy for a few weeks and MKE plans to go see a show on my birthday with him. He doesn't show and I finally hear from him two days later when he texts me and says that the night before my birthday he went out drinking and found someone else. Fast forward to my birthday this year and I make a point of not seeing anyone and barely acknowledging my birthday and thankfully nothing bad happened. I doubt I'll bother to celebrate my birthday for a long time now. Birthdays can be an odd thing for newish couples. Could be a stress thing or I could be guys being crappy. It'll go with guys being crappy. I was working for this place that had a job posting system. They posted a job I thought I'd give a try. I didn't like the job, and went back to what I was originally doing. Cut to a while later, and I get fired from the job. Carrier Boulder, which I don't have an account for, sends me an email full of job openings for the specific type of work I was doing that I didn't like. I never at any point have listed this job in a resume, or as experience on an application. So, yeah, information gets around. Haven't gone on a date in 1.5 years since college graduation. Twice I was stood up at a first date, and numerous other ghostings on Tinder, Bumble and such. Moved to a new state 2.5 months ago and for the first month it's about the same. Finally, bit over a month back got a match from Tinder that actually turned into a real date. Went well. We planned on second date. All good right? The day of my first date I got more matches on Hinge than I had in the past year combined. If you don't KNW. On Hinge you get alerts whenever swipes right and you gotta accept the match. Not like Tinder where both parties swipe right to match. And day before second date, two of the matches asked me out first. Never happened before. I decide to wait for the second date to see if this is something I wanna take seriously. Date goes great. I tell the other matches the deal and delete the apps. Three days later, a co-worker at my new job asked for my number to get drinks that coming weekend. Felt really weird saying sorry I have a gf considering we've not really gotten to that label yet. Barely been a month since we began talking. My friend thinks the universe is telling me to be a cheating butthole. And he agrees with the universe. My other friend said girls can smell when you're not single and when it rains. It pours. And also agrees with the first friend that I should just cheat. This ain't a pity party. Nor a humble brag okay maybe it is. 
but I just find it funny. I can't tell if the universe is throwing me a bone by finally having some dating luck with this girl and the matches are just a coincidence, or if the universe devil is freaking with trying to tempt me. But one thing I do KNW for certain, I need to find better friends. I have an anxiety disorder. What is one of the worst things you could give someone with an anxiety disorder? An unruptured brain aneurysm. Oh yes, a ticking time bomb that could rupture at any moment and automatically kill you. How fun and exciting. On one memorable rainy cold Monday in early 1990s London I was evicted from my flat on no notice when the bailiffs turned up, split up with my longtime girlfriend and then got fired from my job. On Sunday evening everything in my life was running smoothly by Monday afternoon I was alone, homeless and unemployed. Whenever I complain be about someone that person always turn out in the hearing distance. Just today someone took almost 15 minutes to withdraw money from ATM and after 10 minutes people standing in the queue started to get frustrated and left to the other ATMs. We were about to leave too but then the guy finally came out. So, my dad and I went in and I said what the heck was he doing in here for 15 minutes and not even withdraw something. What an idiot. I turn and, voila, there he was, standing behind us waiting for his turn again. Could have been installing a card skimmer or something similar. Watch your statements carefully for a while. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.